It's a bird. It's a plane. It's everything you didn't know about the Superman cartoons from the 1940s. Brought to you by Sci-Fi Wire. Just three years after The Man of Steel debuted in Action Comics number one, Superman was appearing in short films from the famous Fleischer Studios. This being the 1940s, these shorts would play before the main feature film, like you see during a Pixar movie. Fleischer Studios was founded in New York City in 1921 by brothers Max and Dave Fleischer and was first known as Inkwell Studios. The name would change in 1929. During its heyday, Fleischer Studios was responsible for some of the most iconic animated characters like Coco the Clown, Popeye the Sailor, and even Betty Boop. Fleischer's main competition arrived in the 1930s in the form of, you guessed it, the Walt Disney Company. It would then be seized by Paramount in 1941, dubbed Famous Studios, and become the studio's first animation division. Nevertheless, Fleischer Studios is well known for practicing rubber hose animation long after it would fall out of fashion with other animation studios. That's the bouncy sort of style from the old cartoons that was most recently copied in the indie game Cuphead. Love that game. So hard, though. Anyway, back to Superman. The short debuted on September 26, 1941, less than three months before the attack on Pearl Harbor that would launch America into the Second World War. Simply titled Superman, or if you want to get more detailed, Superman the Mad Scientist, the first Superman cartoon was about a mad scientist who threatens his enemies with an electrothanasia ray. Lois Lane pilots a plane to his mountain hideout, but soon she becomes the damsel in distress. He makes her watch in horror as he uses the ray on a bridge and then on the Daily Planet building, which is saved by Superman who places his indestructible body in front of the beam. The first voice of Superman was Bud Collier, who would play the character on the Superman radio show. He'd later go on to be the first host of classic game shows such as Beat the Clock and To Tell the Truth. Joan Alexander, who voiced Lois Lane, became a regular panelist on The Name's the Same, another popular game show. With the creation of famous studios, Seymour Neidl, Isidore Sparber, Sam Butchwald, and Dan Gordon were all put in charge of the production and began cranking out more Superman cartoons. While they kept up the quality that had been known under the Fleischer banner, the storylines had noticeably changed. The first nine Superman shorts were verifiably sci-fi in nature as the hero took on robots, dinosaurs, impending comets, and another mad scientist wanting to induce earthquakes. But by the time Paramount was running the show, America was already embroiled in World War II and Superman's adventures became propaganda stories where he sabotaged the Japanese war effort and foiled Nazi plots. By the end of Jungle Drums in 1943, an enraged Adolf Hitler flicks off his radio upon hearing that an entire fleet of Axis submarines has been destroyed by Allied forces. It was natural for Hollywood studios to churn out pro-war propaganda in order to galvanize the public behind the Allies and encourage them to buy war bonds. Even Disney got in on the action. He'd hail, hail, and wouldn't that be smell? <laughs> yup, Donald Duck just hailed Hitler with his butt. Awesome. After just two years since the series began, the final Superman cartoon was released on July 30th, 1943, two months after the Allied victories in the North African operations codenamed Vulcan and Retribution. Titled Secret Agent, this was the only short where Lois Lane was not featured. Nevertheless, Joan Alexander did the voice of the female protagonist, a federal agent who is exactly identical to Lois, just with blonde hair. She was traveling to Washington, D.C. with vital records about a group of gangsters who realized she was not one of them and now want to kill her. In the end, Superman flies over the Capitol and salutes the American flag. But even with Superman no longer starring in his own cartoons, both Famous and other studios emulated the popularity of the films. The same year as Secret Agent, Warner Brothers released a Looney Tunes parody called Super Rabbit, where Bugs Bunny eats a glowing carrot and takes on the persona of the Man of Steel. A year later, the company behind Mary Melody's Leon Schlesinger Productions used the Superman theme song in one of their private snafu cartoons. As Schlesinger's films were distributed by Warner Brothers, it was a very bold move to use a popular element from a competing studio. That same year, there was a Popeye feature where Bluto dresses up as the hero and challenges the spinach-eating sailor for a competition to see who is more powerful. Thanks to the original cartoons, Superman was now a pop culture staple. It would lead to The Adventures of Superman with George Reeves, which became insanely popular in the 1950s, and in the coming decades, there were musicals, movies, amusement park rides, and more TV shows like The Adventures of Superboy, Smallville, and of course, Krypton on sci-fi. DC Comics paid homage to Fleischer Animations during the mid-80s in their one-shot publication, 50 Who Made DC Great. Even the legendary comic book writer Frank Miller said that the cartoons had an influence on his work. In 1986, he published The Dark Knight Returns, a highly influential graphic novel that transformed the landscape of comics along with Watchmen. 
Famous comic artist Alex Ross was also influenced by the Superman shorts, whose art style was the basis for Batman the Animated Series and perhaps the less known Superman the Animated Series. Animators and filmmakers alike, such as Hayao Miyazaki and Kerry Conran, would use the designs of the robots from 1941's The Mechanical Monsters for their respective work on Castle in the Sky and Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. Sky Captain in particular was meant to evoke the old daring do and sci-fi action of the old film serials and cartoons. No matter how you spin it, Krypton's most famous son was skyrocketed into the glare of the pop culture spotlight thanks to the original cartoon from Fleischer Studios. They ran only a total of 17 films, but those were enough to help turn Superman into the hero he is today. And that concludes another daring sci-fi wire adventure. Tune in next time for more thrills, romance, and suspense. Ha <laughs> ha!